Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back for games five and six of week three of the Draft Premier League between Wigglytuff's Guild and Pori God Squad. Today we have an Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire game between our captain, King L5, and Rob Jr. Now, if you don't know about Rob, Rob is a very good player, often seen on the Smogon scene, the Smogon side of things, playing tours there, and has been known as a very strong draft league player for a very long time, and that is why he's playing Oras. And of course, we have King L5. Now, if you don't know something about uh, last season of the DPL, L5 and I co-captained together and we actually had a little bit of a curse where the two of us would not win on the same week ever <laughs> throughout the entire season. So we're trying to break that curse as you guys saw yesterday. If you did miss that, then go and check out the either the playlist or the video uploaded before this one. But if you guys did miss that, then you'd not know. But uh, of course, I won my game. So now we're really praying that L5 wins and gives us a 4-1 lead. So. We're gonna hop right into this game. You guys can see the matchup on screen. And we are going to lead off with our Buffalant into their Mew. Now, the game plan here was to click Facade immediately because we expected the Mew to be Will-O-Wisp and we wanted to immediately get off a huge hit on it. It's the play that we decided on before the game began during the prep phase, and it's what we went with. So you'll see here that L5 clicks facade as the Mew clicks U-turn and they get into their Dawn Fan and we get off a of facade and it's 28% and we take Helmet Chip now. Uh, unfortunately, we had Head Charge uh, and had we clicked it, uh, this Dawn Fan would have been 2 hit KO'd and there's actually nothing on the opposing team that can take two Head Charges, not even the Empoleon. So something would have been dead. But instead we end up taking a U-turn and we take Helmet Chip and the Dawn Fan is obviously not in range of the next attack. So L5 is immediately forced out here goes out into Crobat to catch the rocks going up so that he can immediately get rid of them. Just go for Defog, and that is uh, what he does. Now the Zapdos comes in, and one of the best ways to deal with Zapdos is, of co course, to get it on a timer. So we go for a Toxic. We end up taking a very, a very big Thunderbolt. Now, when L5 saw Thunderbolt, he figured that he was free to roost because, of course, you lose your flying typing. So that is exactly what he's going to do here. However, the Zapdos ends up being Thunder Wave. And... That is very crippling to our Crobat. As you can see, it's the fastest member on our team. It outspeeds the Greninja, and it's really good at removing hazards and keeping things in check, spreading status with Toxic, etc. So having it paralyzed, pretty bad. Also not being faster than Zapdos now, also pretty bad because now we can't roost on the Thunderbolts. We have to be a little bit more careful with how we position the Crobat. So. Uh, from here, L5 is going to switch out into Rotom Wash as the Zapdos goes for a U-turn. So now we know three moves on the set, Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, and U-turn. We, a lot of us prepped with Discharge instead of ringing Thunderbolt plus Thunder Wave. I guess Rob figured out that this combination was better to guarantee the Paralysis. And Para is huge in this gen, obviously. Thunder Wave doesn't miss in Gen 6. And uh, your speed is cut in 4 and not in 2, so very impactful. So the Zapdos is going to get out with the U-turn, go into the Mew. And now the Mew is, I believe, just going to fire off a Seed Bomb here. And it's going to hit the Registeel, so it doesn't do much damage. But we see U-Turn, we see Seed Bomb. At this point, we're thinking four attacks, which leads us to believe Assault Vest. The Mew is now going to get out of here with U-Turn. And uh, Dawn Fan comes in, and I believe we go for a Toxic. Very nice. So now the Dawn Fan is also on a timer. Now, there is the threat of Heal Bell Altaria, specifically. And the Mew could be Heal Bell as well, if it isn't Assault Vest. Uh, but Heal Bell Alt was something that we were quite scared of uh, because status was partly the best way to deal with Rob's team here. And uh, we're going to switch out into Superior. S rocks go up. And from here, Sur Serp is just going to click Leaf Storm, I believe. And the Zapdos is pressure, as you can see. So we do lose two Leaf Storms there, two out of eight. And uh, I believe that L5 just stays in here, goes for Substitute as the Zapdos goes for a U-turn. Uh, and now the Mew is going to come in, and now the Leaf Storm, the ensuing Leaf Storm here on the Mew is going to confirm that this is Assault Vest based on that damage. And uh, the Mew is going to get out with a U-turn here, and Greninja comes in, which looks a little bit weird, because if we're quite bulky Serp, of course they can calc that through the U-turn damage and the Leaf Storm damage. But if we're quite, quite bulky Serp, we should live any attack, but the, the Greninja goes for a Dark Pulse and knocks us out. Uh, now, of course, Ice Beam would knock us out. Uh, if he went for a super effective move, that or Gunk Shot, etc., right? But Dark Pulse normally, sh I don't believe, should knock us out. So this leads me to believe that the Gren was, in fact, Specs. So right here, L5 is going to go into Gardevoir. This is going to threaten the Greninja, of course, because that's a neutral hit. It's not going to knock out Guard, etc. And um, here, 
L5 clicks Thunderbolt because it's the most uh, reasonable play into Empoleon, into Greninja. Uh, it covers the Zapdos, and then Thonfan comes in. We could just click Hyper, Hyper Voice after, right? It's the best neutral click because Empoleon's the more, more likely thing to come in here, uh, switching out of Greninja. But unfortunately, the Gardevoir clicks Thunderbolt and 10% par paralyzes the Mew, which in turn paralyzes our Gardevoir, which is incredibly annoying, as now we don't have the tool to outspeed the Altaria. Literally everything else on the team is slower than max speed alt, because Crobat is now paralyzed and so is Gardevoir. If you haven't figured it out by now, we don't have Heal Bell, <laughs> so this is a para that's here to stay. And now Registeel comes in. We do catch the Mew getting fully paralyzed, so that's quite nice as we're now able to, I believe, get up rocks, uh, as that is what we do. And the Dawn Fan is going to, I think, click uh, Rapid Spin here or Earthquake. It goes for Roar, actually. And uh, Registeel comes back in. And at this point, I think L5 just had enough, and he's like, oh, no, he goes back into Rotom. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't this turn. Uh, Seed Bomb comes out. So two Mons with Seed Bomb. Rotom comes in, and it's, it does live the, the hit, so it's fine. Uh, now the Mew switches in and dies to rocks, and uh, Hydro Pump comes out. It doesn't connect, of course, with its target. And now Gren's back in. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we have too much for Gren. So Crobat's going to come in here to get sacked off to the Dark Pulse. And I think now we're going to reposition with our Registeel, as uh, that is quite a specially defensive Pokemon right there. And Dawn Fan's going to come in, I believe, on Seismic Toss. Yep, and it's going to go down. So... Now we have our uh, Registeel sitting in at 84%. Uh, Empoleon comes in, and it's just here, I think, to chip away at the Registeel. Uh, but it goes for Swords Dance. And uh, now it's forced out, of course, uh, because Buffalant could be faster than it. Uh, we go for Wild Charge, and we knock out the Zapdos. So good turn, obviously. Uh, but now the ult is in, and this is the problem, right? If our Gardevoir wasn't paralyzed, this was very easy. We Sac Rotom, we go Guardi, we click Hyper Voice into Thunderbolt, and pretty much knock everything out. Uh, but, well, I'm, I guess Empoleon could live, right? It could be Wakan Berry. It could probably take the combination of Hyper Voice into Thunderbolt as well, depending on its EV spread. But uh, now we don't have that tool. And now our Buffalant is just going to switch out into Registeel. And Altaria is going to go for the Frustration. That's going to do 14%. And uh, I think we're just going to start Iron Heading here as Fire Blast, Blast comes out, does 41. So it is enough to two hit KO us. We go for Seismic Toss instead of Iron Head here. Uh, and now we're at 35 and we do take uh, another Fire Blast to the Dome and die. So, and now Gardevoir comes in, but of course Gardevoir is slower and Frustration does get the roll, does knock us out. They could have been adamant. There's a lot of things they could have been. Uh, and Frustration is just going to clean this game. So really, really unlucky 10% para on the Mew. Literally, we just had to avoid it for that one turn and we were fine. Uh, from there, it was, it was perfectly reasonable to just get up rocks. The Mew is dead. It's AV. It's probably faster or speed ties our Gardevoir if we're max speed, right? and uh, probably has Gunk Shot on the set, right? Because it looks to be physical uh, based on the damage that we were seeing from U-Turn and Seed Bomb. And uh, we just conserve our guard. We save it for this Altaria for this exact moment. And then we're good to pretty much save the game from that point because our Registeel wouldn't have had to take damage. It could have been saved for the Greninja and Gardevoir could have taken out the Empoleon. Even if it doesn't take it out, then we still have Rotom uh, or Buffalant to knock it out. And then it's just Registeel versus Greninja. And theoretically, Registeel should win that, assuming no flinches. So very unlucky para, and uh, there's not much you can do about it. The curse persists, and uh, L5 and I cannot seem to win on the same week. So our team drops to a three and two record, and we will now move into game number six. And here we are in the realms of Scarlet and Violet. You see the matchup on screen. We have our Terra Latios team facing off against Sharky, who is a very good player. If you guys know Sharky, he's, uh, he's regarded as one of the stronger players in the pool. Uh, and he's got a Terra Ogre Pond and Terra Comfy. And both of them are here, so either one can Terra. Uh, I haven't actually seen the Terra types yet. They haven't loaded in, so... Not sure uh, what they were. Well, obviously, Ogre Pond is water, but I'm not sure what the Comfy was anymore. Uh, it's been a while since this game happened, so uh, excuse me. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to hop into the into the game here. Uh, I'm not going to stall it too much here, but just know that I believe that this is our strongest Scarlet and Violet team. So here we go. Now I get to see the Terras. So the Comfy is Terra Electric. Nope, it's Terra Ground. It's Terra Ground, yeah. And our Latias is Terra Ghost. Uh, and I think this was, 
I think this was a suggestion that I had made for the Latias set literally like a few hours before the game to switch it up and change up its set just slightly. So we ended up going with this Terra Ghost Latias. And of course, you, as I said, the Comfy is uh, Terra Ground on their side. And there's also one more notable Mon here, which is the Terra Bastiodon, which is Terra Fighting. So if we don't get to get off the Terra on our Latias, we can Terra Fight the Bastiodon, which is actually quite impactful here. Uh, it does make a big difference. As you can see, Lando and Comfy are the only real switch-ins to Terra Fight Body Press. So that is quite important. So we're going to lead off with Meow Scarada, as we've been doing, I think, every week. <laughs> and uh, Avalug is going to lead for Shar Sharky here. Now we're just going to U-turn out, and we're going to get in our Great Tusk here as uh, Icicle Crash comes out and does 58% to us, but that triggers weakness policy. So immediate threat <laughs> in, and uh, Tusk can just fire off a close combat here, I believe, uh, as Lando comes in on the CC and takes 58% from plus one CC after the Intimidate. Uh, and we take Rocky Helmet, which indicates uh, that the Lando should be slower, but based on the damage, it's probably just Rocky Helmet very speedy, enough for Tusk. So Palky is going to make the correct play here of switching out into Zapdos, just playing it safe, keeping the Tusk for later as it can still get off a big hit on the Electros or the Avalug. And uh, Zapdos is going to come in here instead, and it's going to take a Stone Edge. So the Lando, as you can see, was faster than our Zapdos, but our Zapdos is pretty defensive, takes a Stone Edge no problem, and uh, is able to knock out the Lando. Now Terra Ogre Pond comes in, and it does Terra, which means we do not have to fear Terra Ground Comfy. Uh, that is something to note. So our muck is pretty good into it, right? So Ogre Pond comes in, knocks us out with Ivy Cudgel. And now we're going to go into Meow Scarada and immediately threaten a Flower Trick, which, as you can see, they have no switch ins to. So Comfy comes in as we go for U turn. So I'm not sure why we didn't click Flower Trick there. Uh, it looked pretty free, but we do get a U turn off and uh, we are going to get some momentum here into our muck. And uh, now our Muck, I think, is going to click, uh, I want to say Knock Off, but it could be Poison Jab. It is Poison Jab, okay. Uh, and does not get the Poison on the Avalug, but it does go for a Toxic. So now the Avalug's on a timer. Uh, we get EQ'd, we take 55%, and uh, now we're just going to Poison Jab again. And the Avalug is going to go for a Recover, so good turn there from Palky, obviously, staying, being able to, uh, to cover that, um, that Recover turn. And now the Avalug sits at 55%. Now the Latias comes in, and like I said, we're Terra Ghost, and I believe we do Terra this turn, so. Uh, and we're gonna go for Calm Mind. So Avalog's gonna go for Icicle Crash. It's gonna do a good amount, 33%, but nowhere near enough to deal with us. And uh, we're just going to go for the Recover here. And now the Eel comes in and we go for a Shadow Ball. I guess we were expecting Dragon Tail, and that is what comes out. And uh, we're able to Shadow Ball again, and Citrus Berry pops, and they miss another Dragon Tail. <laughs> and uh, our Latias just sits in here on the Electros for three turns or four, four turns. I forgot how many it was. And uh, is able to just get off a ton of damage on the Electros. And now Tusk gets Dragon Tailed in, which is maybe the best thing that could have come in. I think really, realistically, Bastiodon was the only bad option there. Like Meow Scarada is good at that point because the Eel is so low. And uh, Tusk, of course, outspeeds Eel and is able to just close combat and knock it out. So down goes that. And uh, now in comes the Ogre Pond again to pick up its free KO. And uh, we go for they go for Trailblaze, and that knocks us out. So they're now plus one speed. Uh, but we go into Bastiodon, and uh, so we go into Bastiodon, right? There's a few different things that Bastiodon can do to deal with physical attackers. It can. Um, well, for one, it has Boots and Sturdy. So it never dies in one hit to anything, right? Secondly, it has... Body press, it has iron defense, so it's able to set up alongside setup mons. Ogre Pond's a little bit problematic though, because it has access to Encore. However, with a set like Sword Zance, Trailblaze, Ivy Cudgel, I don't think you're Encore. So I don't think that Palkia at this point was worried about Encore. Uh, and we have we can have Metal Burst, we can have ID with Body Press, we can have uh, Foul Play as well. And in fact, we have uh, pretty much all of those things. So we go for body press here and Trailblaze comes out, does 25% and now we foul play and we knock out the Ogre Pond. So it needed to Trailblaze to break Sturdy to avoid dying to Metal Burst. In doing so, it allowed us the extra free turn to get off the damage with body press and then go for foul play. So Bastionon is one of the better physical checks right now to like any physical setup sweeper. It's, it's essentially 
like old gen Alakazam, where it can just come in and immediately threaten the setup threat because it's got magic guard, focus sash, counter, right? And very strong special moves. It's kind of acting as an Alakazam on this team, sort of an emergency button. And it does this job so, so well. And I think Bastion for two points is extremely underrated. Like so incredibly underrated when you're able to add Terra to it as well for free, by the way. Uh, for absolutely free, there is no Terra tax on Bastiodon. I think this is one of the like most value Terra picks that you can get anywhere on the board uh, below like 10 points. Seriously, I think it's that good and people have to start respecting it. So much so that in mids this week, somebody picked up a Bastiodon in Scarlet and Violet. So just to give you an idea. Anyway, Bastiodon is able to deal with the Ogre Pond and now comes in the Avalug, but Avalug does not deal with Bastiodon. <laughs> we get up an Iron Defense. And uh, as you'll see, Earthquake bounces off, does 32%. That's a 4x effective move, by the way. And Avalug dies in one to a physical hit, which you do not often see. <laughs> so absolutely cracked. Uh, next up is Dark Riot. Of course, can Focus Blast us, but goes for Dark Pulse and we live <laughs> and go for Body Press and knock out the Dark Riot. Bastion just knocked out an Avalug, a physical tank, an Ogre Pawn, a water type, and a dark cry. <laughs> this thing is insane. <laughs> There's no other words for it. It lives draining kiss from Comfy now and goes for body press and does 34%. So Comfy is not able to comfortably set up or synthesis here. Uh, it can't do this forever. It takes 30 from, from body press, finally goes for draining kiss. And now our Latias is of course Terra ter ter Ghost. So it's able to take this on no problem. Goes for draining kiss, does 12%. And uh, we're just gonna sit here and calm mind until the cows come home and are able to 1v1 the Comfy. And you guys uh, can see how this is going to end. Now, Encore doesn't really matter because once we get out of the Encore, we just go for a Calm Mind. Uh, so they can lock us into, and they don't even have setup on the set. It's Draining Kiss Synthesis Encore U-Turn. So once the Encore ends, we start Calm Minding, and then eventually Shadow Ball is just going to destroy this thing. So uh, I think that's what Polyki is going to do from here. He might also just Shadow Ball. Yeah, Shadow Ball at plus one does 48%. Uh, there's no way to, to consistently heal this off. There's too many Shadow Balls. You can't stall them out. Eventually, it'll get a Spadef drop. They are Citrus Berry on Comfy as well, but again, does not matter. We're just going to run you out of Synthesis at this point, and there's the Spadef drop. And and another synthesis. This will come close to knocking out Comfy, but not quite. 66% draining kiss, and that is the end of the game. So Bastiodon on full display there, basically taking out three and a half Pokemon and setting up for the Latias sweep in the end. Now the Comfy could have potentially been a little bit more threatening in the end game there if it was like a Calm Mind variant uh, and it was like Life Orb, but I think Latias still breaks through it by the sheer fact that it's faster than the Comfy and is able to uh, bypass the Encore and eventually just get off Calm Minds, start Calm Minding, Calm Minding, Calm Minding, Encore ends, start Shadow Balling, right? Uh, I think it eventually beats it, so. Yeah, that's uh, that's the win. That's that's a great win for us, and that puts us at a four and two record. So, looking good. Now we haven't been able to close out a week without a draw until now. We just need one more win in these last two games, and we have Hunter with his rain, and we have Big Money Guy at the end coming in with the uh, the King Gambit team with the Mudsdale that you guys saw last week. So you're not gonna want to miss that. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Uh, hit that button. Hit the like button as well, and let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed these games and if you're looking for to tomorrow's games as well and which one you're most excited for and i will see you guys tomorrow peace out